Welcome back, you're watching Stir It Up, The Adventure Chef. I have not been doing this for a very long time. Um, basically, when I lived in the States, I had a backyard garden, kitchen garden. Every year, uh, Mother's Day, my husband would plant me a garden and I would tend to it. And um, this was give, a gift to me from my dad. And we decided we were thinking about moving back, settling here for our older years. So this was something that I enjoy doing and my husband knew the only way he would get me to move here you know now is if I had something to occupy me so this farm has been occupying me for about the past eight months when we came here this farm was a mess all of the tall grass you see behind me and alongside this was what was here and this is one of the most difficult grasses to control so we invested some money and had it, um, uh, um, some people come in with machines and cleared all of that heavy duty grass that we couldn't even walk through to be able to get this place ready for uh, planting the crops. That was an investment, uh, a big investment actually. We, I, I had no idea how to get started. So I questioned a few farmers and I got a few ideas from them. I introduced myself to the people in, in the agriculture uh, wind band building and I immediately got a farmer's license even though I was not a farmer. <laughs> but I got one because I did the class, the required class. And then uh, we decided we wanted to do potatoes because we understood that this was the crop that is m most prolific here. We started a crop with a few, with help from a few farmers, and um, potatoes are, uh, they grow very well here. And it's a short-term crop, basically, a three-month crop. So we were able to see a turnaround really quickly. Now, as you can see, almost 80% of the farm is um, potatoes. That's the main crop. But I'm experimenting with other crops that I think will do very well here, and crops that are not really uh, indigenous to St. Lucia, you know, primarily. And um, I've, been, I've been happy with the results because we've tried things like radish and kohlrabi and, and different types of lettuces that people just haven't had here. So um, I have been working with that, and that's how we've come to this point. As farming is concerned, um, this area is a heavy tourist traveled area. And I don't know when you were coming if you saw all the vendors alongside. So our long-term goal is to be able to make this farm tourist friendly as well. So when they come by, we could probably set up a, you know, maybe a smoothie bar where we make smoothies out of kale, for example, or spinach or something, you know. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work yet because we haven't really put a lot of effort into getting that done. We're just trying to get ourselves established. Um, but there's always a possibility because the, the vans stop right here and the tourists are looking and very interested in what's going on over here. So I realize that there is a possibility that they might have an interest and I might want to accommodate that interest. We have excellent relationships with all our local suppliers and vendors. Uh, one of our most uh, common vendors that we use is the local farmers in our area. We have the Roseau Valley, one of the largest banana producing valleys in, uh, on, on the west coast, as well as uh, Havana and uh, Millet in these areas. And we try our best to source locally and we, ha we have great relationships with the local farmers from the other parts of the island. 
uh, we, that we normally go to in the market. We do, they do a lot of delivery or we, we also have to go pick up on their farms. And it's very interesting when we visit their farms to see um, how they've grown throughout the years um, in relation to tourism here on the island. Hi, this is Shahid Rambali. This is Stirred Up, The Adventure Chef.